Jung's uh, nihilistic principle of antiochromia, the uh, chrome means uh, the racetrack, like the hippodrome is uh, literally hippos, but of course, so hippodrome is a, it's a racetrack, and chrome has to do with speed and running movement. <laughs> Uh, quickness. Um, so he's, this end antiochromia is the turning backwards whereby something shadow um, manifests its opposite and collapses it. Um, so this is evident um, so far as we take that theme as a, a frame in which we can look at things. Uh, so, therefore, a way of thinking Heidegger, this is evident in Heidegger and his takeover of the uh, modern difficulty of the uh, two sides of the Western tradition, the universal and the particular, which is also thinkable in the following way as the intellect, the idea for the intellect, and on the other side, the particular thing, the, the which, which is it, rather than the what is it. Um, the, the which is it, I guess, though we could point to it, ready to hand, or we could point to, that's another way of thinking, ready to hand, point to, rather than touch. Um, so which is it is in the, on the side of the material and uh, the empiricism. Uh, what is it or the essence to also be thought as the form, to also be thought as the nature of the thing, uh, which is also wrapped up in the conception of uh, substance of Lucia and Aristotle. The, what is it, for example, in the central thought of Hume concerning causality, which is in the middle of um, the shakeup of the uh, German idealists with these kind of problems, who tried to shake free already of the two poles of the idea of causality for the intellect? We know there's such a thing as to understand the idea of causality. It's like a rule, and then we look and see where is it applied, and, and clearly it seems like it's in some ways applied, but then Hume, set, Hume taking the side of the material and the empirical um, uh, puts this uh, material and empirical on trial and says, uh, isn't it that uh, in the strict sense we don't really have any uh, the requisite uh, evidence uh, to found a notion like causality property. Uh, so you'd have to know that something would always happen in a certain uh, manner. That, uh, and aside from that, I mean, just that would be even to just use causality as a predictive measure, but to think that causality really was something in the material, empirically visible, we'd have to somehow think this thing is a cause, this thing is an effect, and see somehow the connection. How is that actually happening like the thing uh, prior uh, like the day is somehow pushing forward and becoming the night in a way that it causes the night to come into being. Um, so the attempt to overcome these two sides is also another way we can think the forehanded height and the, um, the zoo-handed height. So the zoo-handed height is the material and the empirical and the daily, the, strictly speaking, it's um, Heidegger tries to coordinate it with um, existence, um, which is said in Aristotle as um, the tau t sd, or the that it is, but it's clearer to say probably that it's, what we're talking about on that side is not the that it is, but the which it is, uh, which one, the point to it, which one. 
Um, that's the thing that exists. Whereas the essence is supposed to be, according to the Athenian thinking and the, I think already prior to Plato, um, yeah, because this is the same as the split in, um, of the one and the many in Heraclitus, right? Uh, this whole argument about the one and the many, the many are the material existence, the, all the components that make up a tree, for instance, and then the tree is the idea for the intellect. So one could probably call that sometimes it's called quote unquote abstract uh, reasoning, which is then said not to be something that animals can do. Um, so the attempt to overcome this is the critical, it's called critical thinking. Um, and so, of course, it was first in Kant, but then in, in others. Um, so in Heidegger, yeah, we had that forehand in height, which is the eye of the intelligence, the just staring, the abstract eye. So how does that work? So we actually, if we think it into empirical, if I just say a tree, I'm doing an abstraction. Just the tree, not the grass around it, not the sky, not the air, not the whole universe, just the tree. So I'm abstracting one, even straightforwardly, literally, that's what we're talking about when we talk about the mind. This act of abstracting something literally in reality. So it touches directly to reality. It can't be distinguished, as it were, simply from the senses rather than the quote-unquote mind. It's happening right there. Um, so if you think in terms of this ant antiodrome, just to uh, sort of bookend this, and the, the whole thought itself is, is a, uh, a bookend in uh, the one side pushing the other, the one side perhaps uh, collapsing the other into nothing. So, um, Sorga would be the books then, somehow in between these two for Heidegger's way of thinking. Uh, but the general thought of the forehand in the availability, which the forehand being understood as the involvement in this place of the, uh, which is it, where you can point at things, and, uh, sorry, the zoo hand, the uh, two hand, the zoo hand, two hand is involved. And then the forehand in uh, is this which is, as it were, somehow available. So I think we have a, um, a price signal to think of it economically. Hayakian sense. Um, there's a symbol on things. It says this is uh, the tree. This is this, this idea is proclaiming something, uh, propounding it to us. Uh, so those are ways of thinking what Heidegger is trying to get at. But we should remember that these terms have always been very vague. The difference between uh, existence material and the experiential and on the other hand essence the thing for the mind and the idea um, it's only through straining that communities talking all in the same terminology all on doing try, going for the same goal like the uh, medieval uh, Christians well the church was still in its primitive unity still um, even still attached to the East and West. Um, I mean, that's a long question of the exact, even though you have the moment of the schism, that's not exactly the meaning of the, um, the end of the unity of the spirit, even, the, and at the same time, way before the schism of the churches, there were all kinds of disagreements. Um, so it's not that easy to, to just put it on one day to just in thinking of this notion of the primitive unity of something. Uh, so there's another uh, metaphor, uh, the split of the East and Western Christianity. So in, perhaps by going back to the uh, first Greek thinker who quote-unquote raised his eyes, uh, 
um, in X and Meander, we're also going back to this moment of the primitive unity of the existence and the essence, which in the uh, scholastics called transcendentals. So just to show how the term transcendental um, can, as it were, the, the bubble off into nothing once we um, start to uh, relativize it but in a specific way where we're thinking towards something that actually happened in history or thinking through the history of our own way of thinking where we're um, sticking to the things that seem to be the most cogent and not merely applying a, a all destroying sort of this Nietzschean uh, infinite advancement of uh, uh, relativizing simply for its own sake.